What is up boys and girls, it's Seb here with Modify Up. That's right, we're back and today we're taking the GT86 out to Winton Raceway with the XE crew and I'm going to show you guys how to survive your first track day. So let's check it out. Okay, so you've taken the plunge and decided that you're gonna put your money where your mouth is and get your car out on track. For some, this can be super intimidating and scary, but I'm here to tell you that you can't let these feelings get in the way of life and learning how to control your car at the limit. What's the truth, damn it? I'm afraid, all right? You wanna hear me say it? You wanna break me down, all right, I'm afraid. So, assuming your car is already prepped for track, I'm gonna hold your hand from start to finish and despite what many people think, a track day starts long before the car sees the tarmac of a racetrack. Before you leave for the track, you need to get your paperwork in order. That means getting your racing license and downloading the regulations for the event you're entering. Look at the regs and see what license is applicable for the event and track, because they do differ and some tracks only allow certain licenses. Some clubs will allow you to buy a license on the day, but it's just easier on everyone if you get this organized before you roll up. Now in the regs, you'll find certain requirements for the car to pass scrutineering or tech. Most importantly, at the lower levels, this will be a fire extinguisher mounted securely on a metal bracket and a dot or snell rated helmet. You'll need long sleeves and enclosed shoes too. You can expect all other items to be general roadworthiness items. If your car has any issues whatsoever, you need to fix these before you hit the track. This will ensure you run smoothly during the day and will also prevent ruining everyone else's day. If your car breaks down or you spill oil on track, all you're doing is lowering your confidence and stealing track time off everyone else who's paid to be there. Now, of course, things happen which are out of anyone's control, but do your best to be as prepared as possible. The most important mods you can do are driver mods. Seat time will trump physical mods, especially if you're just starting out. But to get seat time, you need a reliable car. So let's start from the top. What should you take to the track? It goes without saying, pack your car the night before your track day so you can see how everything fits because if you aren't towing your car to the track, you'll need to somehow fit everything into your car. It doesn't matter how good a Tetris you are, somehow at the end of the track day, nothing fits in the same way you packed it. Put it down to being exhausted, but the pack up at the end of the day can be brutal. So I'm driving my car to the track and this is what I'll be taking. A lightweight jack, a toolkit, a track box full of essentials, an air compressor, and my track tires and wheels. Try to pack the least amount of tools to cover the most amount of use cases. Do you really need your whole socket collection or can you get by with just 3 8 sockets and a couple of half inch ones? In the toolkit, you'll need to bring your torque wrench for doing up your wheel nuts, a wheel chock and a tire pressure gauge. Next, we have the track box. And in that box is a small amount of each type of fluid for the car. Brake and clutch fluid, engine oil, coolant, transmission oil, diff oil, a fluid transfer pump, a funnel, some brake cleaner, some RTV silicon, cable ties, race tape, rags, spare wheel nuts, spark plugs, interior anti-fog, and a camera gauge. If you're driving to the track on a different set of tires, make sure you have enough room to carry your wheels as well. And last of all, make sure you bring a camping chair to rest on between runs. Once your car is packed, make sure you get a good night's sleep. You're gonna be concentrating at 1000%, so you really wanna be well rested. On the morning of your first track day, you're gonna be filled with nervous anticipation. Make sure you get that nervous dump out in the morning because you'll find more skid marks in the toilets at the track than there are on the skid pan. Also, don't fill up heavy in breakfast. Eat light because the G-forces going around the track can make you feel sick. And if you filled up mega, then this problem will only compound and you'll find yourself slower on track as you try not to hurl. Make sure you read over the regs as this will tell you what time the gates open and if there are any special bumping procedures for the day. Get there early so you have time to unload your car, set up your pit area, change your wheels over in time for scrutineering. To be led on the track, you'll need to make sure you've removed any loose items from the car such as floor mats, fluffy dice, and subwoofers. Once you're all set up in your bay, it's time to sign in and if your day is timed, pick up your timing device. The timing device known as a transponder will need to be mounted to your car and there are a lot of opinions on where the best position is to mount the transponder. 
The most common position is on the front bumper as it's the tip of the car and provides the most unobstructed path to the timing beams which are buried underneath the track surface. It's a good spot, but keep in mind if you come off the track and damage your transponder, guess who pays for the damage? That's right, it's you. So in saying that, I always mount the transponder inside the vehicle facing down unless specified by the event staff on the day. You can always check the timing screens at the track after your first session to confirm your timing device is working correctly. If your track day isn't timed, there are a lot of apps you can use on your phone to time you using GPS, such as Race Chrono or Track Addict. There are even devices like the Garmin Catalyst that will analyze your driving technique to help you improve your lap times. Depending on how the day is run, your car will either be scrutineered in bay or you'll be required to line up with your car and helmet at a scrutineering area. This will be done with or without you, so make sure your helmet is in the car and that the boot and bonnet are pop so your car can be checked. Once completed, a past scrutineering sticker will be placed on your car along with your racing numbers written on your side window and windscreen, so you can be identified from a distance. Now it's onto the driver's briefing. A lot of clubs state, if you don't make the driver's briefing, you won't be allowed to drive. So this is the most important part of the day. Here you'll be informed on how the day will run. You'll be shown the flag and lighting system and be shown what the expected etiquette is for the day and passing slow vehicles. Pay attention here and be courteous when you're out on track. No one likes a douchebag and acting like one will get you ejected from the venue. So before your first session, make sure all your wheel nuts are torqued correctly with the torque wrench all your fluids are at the right levels and your tire pressure is set to your hot target pressure. Since this is your first session, from here on in you'll be letting pressure out of your tires until they stabilize, which will probably be in your third session on the track. Now listen out for your group to be called over the speaker system and head over to the dummy grid once you're ready. This is it, the moment you've been waiting for. While sitting in the dummy grid, check your straps, check your helmet, make sure your aircon is off, and start to prepare yourself mentally. Break in a straight line. Turn in as you roll off the brakes. Pick up the throttle early. Stay off the curbs if it's still damp. All of these things will be racing through your mind. And then you'll be led onto the track. Make sure you show the event staff your wristband and away you go. First session out of your first track day. Do not kid yourself. This is a cider session. A session to feel your car at 80%. A session to learn the track in all of its bumps and quirks. A session to see how much your grip levels increase with tire temperature. A session to get your car up to temperature. The tires, brakes, clutch, and engine will very rarely have been up to this temperature doing laps around your local kebab shop. Now let's watch Napo show you what happens if you push too hard in your first session. Now's the time to get your eye in. Make sure your car will allow you to lean on it in the coming sessions. What you'll notice straight away is how much the level of grip increases with tire temperature. And in turn, how grip does not just fall away if you push past the limit. You'll also notice that a car can be stiff on the street, but soft and doughy around the racetrack at the limit. The first session should be used to open your eyes to these conditions and adjust accordingly. Not just the car physically, but within yourself mentally. Yes, you can brake much later than you thought. Yes, your car will stick if you turn in that aggressively. Also, if you're on new tires, this is the time to get them through their first heat cycle. If you boil brand new tires right now, they'll never give you the intended performance throughout their life cycle.
that is the end of your first session out at the track. No doubt you'll be feeling all the feels, but now is the time to establish your post session routine. Your cool down lap needs to be exactly that, a cool down, but you need to keep a balance of cooling your car and keeping your tire temperature up so that the pressures can be accurately recorded. So keep your speed up, but your load low to maximize airflow, but minimize demand on the car. Now exit the track and get to your bay as fast as you can whilst following the shared area speed limits. Once you get to your bay, park the car and leave your park brake off. This is where your wheel chop comes in. Your brakes will be stinking hot, so parking with your handbrake engaged will warp your rotors, causing vibrations under brakes. You want to check your tire pressure straight away. The closer your tires are to running temperature, the better. Immediately, you'll see your pressures have increased dramatically. So take note of how much air you need to release to bring them back to your target hot pressure. As the day goes on, the amount of pressure you release will be less and less as the tire stabilizes. If you note how much air in total over the day you released, then the next track day you can already start in the window without having to adjust the tire so much. Once your tire pressures have been checked, you want to check your tire wear. Excessive outer sidewall wear tells you your hot pressure is off and or your camber needs to be adjusted. Excessive feathering will tell you your toe is off. Inspect your rotors for any cracks and check the front and rear of the car for any leaks. Now we can wait for the car to cool down before we do anything else. Before your next session, once the car is cool, recheck all your fluid levels. This will give you an indication of if the engine is using oil and or if you have a non-visible slow leak anywhere. The last thing you should do before each session begins is re your wheel nuts. With different metals come different rates of expansion in the wheel, wheel nuts and wheel studs. So it's no surprise that the wheel nuts can work themselves loose during the heat up and cooling down process. Get in the habit of doing these pre and post rituals and you'll eliminate any silly mistakes during the day. Pre-session, fluid check, wheel talk. Post-session, wheel chalk, tire pressure, visual check. It's all right. Breathe a sigh of relief and start to get into the groove as you relax more and more on track with each session. Remember to keep hydrated between sessions and rest when you can as the level of concentration can be very demanding. Now the rest is up to you and your development arc. Just remember to have fun and be respectful. You'll find yourself shaving big chunks of time off in the beginning as you learn to control the car. The longer you keep at it the smaller the gains will be as you become more and more consistent. Don't forget to check out other cars at the event and talk to other drivers on technique and car setup.
At the end of the day, it's time to pack up, and after a full track day, this can be the most dreaded part of the day. But if you are organized and pack your things neatly, it should be a breeze to pack up. Don't forget to remove your timing device and return it to the timing tower. If you're driving home on the same tires you came on, don't forget to pump them back up as they'll be cold on the street and therefore have a lower pressure. If you're like me and have dedicated track wheels, then go ahead and swap them over. We'll go through storage prep in another video. Make sure you leave your pit bay as clean as you found it. One last thing to do before you leave is to wipe your racing numbers off your windscreen so you don't draw unnecessary attention from the fuzz. On your way home, realize that you've been driving flat out all day and adjust your behavior for the street. It's all too easy to drive like an idiot on the way home from the track. Use the time driving home to reflect on what you've learned over the course of the day, what adjustments you need to make to the car and your driving style. Where are you losing the most time and what needs to be upgraded on the car? What I love about driving is that it really is a journey of self-development. You don't need to buy every part in the HKS catalog before you can get out on track. You don't need 350 kilowatts before you turn a wheel in anger. It's time to stop hiding behind your mods and just get out there and have fun. Everybody has to start somewhere and every single person who's done this will have been nervous their first time. It's human nature. So don't be like Rocky, don't be afraid. Go out there, learn a skill that could save your life and most of all, have fun along the way. That's it guys, I hope this helps you get through your first track day and I wanna send a huge shout out to XC Crew for always putting on flawless days and letting chumps like me get out on track in a safe environment. Remember, it's all about learning and having fun one step at a time. If you like what you see today, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything coming up. That's it guys, bye.